तेजस गुड मॉर्निंग गाजी सर गुड मॉर्निंग काजी सर यू या या इट्स परफेक्ट सो वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग इन नेक्स्ट थ्री थ्री फोर मिनट ओके गुड मॉर्निंग काजी सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सर 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 वही कोई इस कमिंग Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So, वो ऊपर का स्पीकर बंद कर.
they just said i think there's something wrong on your end because all the echo is coming from your mic yeah actually saloni i got it so what we are doing is my entire team is here today for uh, this kazi saab's presentation kazi sir that's fantastic teja sir Saloni, can we have the disclaimer slide? Yes, sir. Putting it up.
I think we should start, right? Saloni? Saloni, can, can we have the issue video and then you can start actually? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, uh, so hi everyone. Uh, welcome to yet another session by Ishre Mumbai chapter. I am Saloki Shetty. I am uh, the woman chair for Ishre Mumbai chapter this year. Today with us, uh, we have Mr. Ajaj Kazi who will be talking about good installation practices and safety at site. He's also been the uh, past president for Ishre Mumbai chapter, so someone really close to our heart. So before we begin, uh, Ajatza, please give me some time to play a little um, a video about Ishre so that these guys know what the benefits are and why you yourself were at Ishre Mumbai chapter uh, president. So from the video, I hope it is a clear what are the benefits of being Ishre Mumbai chapter, of a member of the Ishre Mumbai chapter. So you will get to uh, participate in hundreds of our webinars, our training sessions, our workshops. Also, you'll get a maximum networking opportunities in our HVAC industry if you are from our, if, from our industry. Also, there's this certification course called ICP where you'll, you'll get uh, amazing amount of knowledge from all the industry experts about a design, about services, maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. So now without uh, wasting much of your time, uh, let me introduce our uh, speaker for today. We have a Mr. Ajaj Kazi with us. He is, uh, so just one minute, I'm introducing you. Okay. Uh -huh. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So today with us, uh, we have Mr. Ajaj Kazi, sir. He is the project director for Voltas Limited. Uh, if you see Dissect in BKC, that is what Ajaj sir handles. It's his best site ever that I have seen. And uh, Mr. Ajaj Kazi is the project director for Voltas Limited at Tata Enterprise. He has joined Voltas in 1993 and has completed 21 years so far. He started the journey as a project supervisor. He has rich experience in handling MEP projects across Maharashtra, Goa, and MP for various applications like offices, hotels, hospitals, malls, airports, power, uh, refinery, pharmaceuticals, and many more. He has handled a large team consisting of various disciplines and experience. He's a mechanical engineer from VGTI Mumbai. He's also a project management professional from Project Management Institute, USA. He has been the past president for Ishre Mumbai chapter and currently is the zonal chair for research and promotion. He's currently serving a position of secretary for Ashre Mumbai chapter as well. Uh, I I would like to also add uh, that uh, that Ajat sir is one amazing project management professional. He has inspired me also to actually look into that when I attended your very first lecture, Ajat sir. So you know, without wasting much of your time, I'm going to let you go ahead with your presentation for today. Thank you, Saludi. Thank you. Hope you are able to see the screen, Saloni. Yes, sir, it is visible. Thank you, Saloni, for that kind introduction. Uh, I don't know whether I, I am preserving that. But let's start uh, without wasting much time on the topic of today. 
that is the good installation practice and we'll cover a little bit about safety little later so this is the topic uh, which is a basic topic and there are some basic facts which we generally miss on a project uh, for hvac and there are some hard learnings which from my failure in last 22 years uh, i have learned and those i am trying to put it across to you so with this we'll start welcome once again i will not uh, get into the this, uh, this thing but i'll start with this uh, slide uh, which is uh, self explanatory and with this we will start with the uh, agenda today execution best practices why what is the reasons what are the reasons and we always question why one is the quality part of it second is the speed and third is safety okay, how what is the quality which we produce after execution of the work how fast we can do the job and while doing the job are our people safe is the environment safe even after completion of the job so these are the three things which i feel uh, you know call for good installation practices and based on this we are going to uh, have our session today we'll start with some of the equipments first uh, i have categorized into equipments and some of the low side works uh, and what are the uh, good installation practices in those so we'll start with air cooled chiller first these are the air cooled chillers that you have seen most of the places uh, air cooled chiller is nothing but you know uh, a hot tea in a cup and where what we do is we take out the heat from the fans on top of it like this you can see the uh, vapors coming out uh, of the cup of the tea so that's the basic fundamental but most of the installations of air cooled chillers are either carried out in the open space or on the rooftop of the uh, no buildings so these are some of the installations which you can see over here these are some of the installation this is the these are the chillers air cooled chillers which we install these are some of the installation which we have done uh, in the open spaces and we must uh, be able to understand this slide which is very important is if we have multiple chillers we should have sufficient distance between the two chillers you can see from this simulation over here the distance between the two chillers when it increases the the efficiency of the chiller improves so if you look at here there are some uh, you know uh, yellow spots over here but if you go here the yellow spots uh, goes away and it becomes blue over here so it is important to understand the fact of putting the chillers when we install even if it is the space uh, wide space allocation when designing and when we design and when we actually implement at site we should ensure that the distance between the two chillers is maintained sufficiently second thing is when we look at the building that is set on top of the buildings that the wall of the building and the chiller installation you can see over here if it is nearer here the air flow is uh, limited that's why you can see the red surface over here uh, red patch over here when it go, moves away the red patches diminishes so these are the two things which we must ensure while we install the air cooled chillers and these are the basic things which we generally miss and then we have issues about you know compressor tripping on the high recharge and other things but if you install it at the beginning uh, properly i think this will not have an issue look at this you can see uh, from the 6 feet distance you can see the red patches over here and when you have you have a 12 feet distance you have almost no red patches over here that means in between you will have a hot zone over here and that hot intake will will not be able to you know uh, transfer the heat uh, to the air properly so these are the two things which are important when you look at the buildings as i said earlier if the distance is very very less between the wall of the building and the chillers you can see the kind of hot zone which gets created over here and if it is moved this is at around 3.7 meters you can see uh, the hot uh, you know spot is uh, almost gone when we talk about air cooled chiller when we install the air cooled chiller we should have point loading of the chillers coming from the manufacturer because this is very important the chillers distribution of the load in terms of the weight of the chiller is different at different points so there are six point or eight point depending upon the chiller dimensions but those load points have to be known because of that load points we will be able to do a selection of a spring isolator which is mentioned over here you can see this properly and 
while installation of these spring isolator what happens is generally the spring isolator looks same when they arrive at site when we install the chiller we give it to some of the mathadis to install the chiller the spring isolator below the chiller that gentleman doesn't know what what is the load of that spring uh, isolator which it can carry so based on the point load we designed the spring isolator and it must be ensured that this the spring isolator goes at right place if we install a spring isolator at different place then entire you know uh, purpose of putting spring isolators or vibration isolator is is gone so that's very important as a part of engineer who is their part of this execution of this chiller to ensure the right spring isolator goes at right point and that depends upon the point loading of the chiller so there there are two important points one is coming from the manufacturer uh, for the point loading and second is getting the spring isolator at right position otherwise the entire purpose of having spring isolator will go away another point which we miss most of the time is we generally put the chillers on top of somebody else and most of the time you can find the ceos of the of the companies are sitting on the top of the floor and we go and install the chillers on top of his head and then the vibrations and the noise starts and the person who signs our checks as a contractor will have problems for life and that is one of the important area while we see which is the right location is the location very sensitive there are a lot of litigations which have happened because of the noise and vibrations when the these kind of installations have been you know uh, installed near some of the residential areas or on top of some of the uh, important persons so these are another area which we should look at when we install the air cooled chiller i have talked about uh, correct vibration isolator and that is one of the important even if you put vibration isolator even if you do everything else but if you don't put the right vibration at the right place you will have issues later some of the key points uh, when we talk about uh, you know seismic which is not a part of mumbai uh, you know zone but there are some seismic snubbers which are required to avoid this toppling of the chiller in case of earthquake so these are one of the issues second we use victolic pipe connections you can see this here earlier we used to weld the flange connection to the chiller the chiller pipe and inlet and outlet connections now we install the victolic connections how to use that how we can properly use it that's another area and third area is when we install the pipes or when we connect the pipes to the chiller remember a chiller is a vibrating body if you are installing the vibration isolator to avoid the transfer of vibration from chiller to the slabs that's one part but the same has to be isolated from all the sides otherwise it will have no impact so that's why we isolate the piping which is connected to the chiller right and when we do that we have such kind of you no know, expansion bellows but what we do is generally there are two tie rods you can see over here these two tie rods we generally tighten from both the sides these are only guiding tie rods and the purpose of putting these expansion bellows to minimize the vibration goes away because if you do this the vibration can transfer from this place to through this tie rod to the pipes again so these are only the guiding this thing which again we give it to the fitters they install it because there are nuts they will go and tighten it for the purpose of why we are installing this has to be told to those gentlemen and that is very important to understand when we install the chillers we generally take care of uh, use of cranes you can see some of the examples over here but in my personal experience and even rn is here we have found cup at least three or four occasions the chiller uh, while installing the on top of this machine the crane toppled the crane was not the right crane to you know install this great type of uh, chillers with depending upon the weight generally we give this contract to some of the mathadis and they said i got 200 ton of chillers uh, 200 of crane we say our uh, chiller load is 10 tons that is sufficient but generally don't get into to as an engineer to the chart at what point of time at what angle and at what distance uh, from the building the capacity of this is of this crane is it sufficient to handle the weight of the chiller and that is very important to understand before you even go ahead with this we had issues earlier because we used to believe on some of the people but we are not gone into the engineering part of it and these charts are available with all the crane manufacturers you can add duration based on the uh, you know uh, the duration of the use of this crane but we must be able to get such information from them before we go ahead because chiller is the costly material chiller is the last thing which goes on the project 
if the project is supposed to be completed next one month and chiller arrives, if there is an issue while handling this chiller, then getting the chiller again will take another three, four months and that will have larger impact on the project, right? The revenue will not start for the customer. So it's very important to understand this. And next we are going to talk about this water cooled chiller. These are, uh, you know, chillers which I'm uh, talking about here. One of the problem which I faced here is uh, the proper proper space for the maintenance. Now that is missing because chiller rooms are getting compact and compact, but we must be able to give due respect for the maintenance because the project team will go away and the next team who gets actually married to the customer for life cycle of this project faces a lot of troubles. Another important factor which I, I have come across is the allowable space on the nozzles. Now these are the nozzles which are the connections which are connecting to the chillers. Now if this the allowable stress over here is not known, which I, I, what I want to see is, if you have a cooling tower on top, and if you take the suction of the cooling tower to the pump, and pump increases the pressure and puts into the, uh, the chiller, this stress over here has to be looked into with respect to the pressure which is being developed by the pump. And I have faced some of, some of the issues over here, wherein the gasket of these nozzles used to get away, and there, there is to be a leakage from here. So we must get these details from the manufacturer, what is the allowable stress, and based on that, we should see what is the pressure coming from the pumps or what is the pressure coming, if it is coming directly from the cooling tower to the uh, chillers, depending upon the head of the uh, you know pipe or the lift of the pipes, and we must be able to see that, otherwise we'll have issues later. I have experienced this, that's what I want to tell you. Again, here, you can see if you use the wrong isolator, you have put it over here. This isolator is put just as a sake of putting it. But if you put the wrong isolator, again, because of the point loading, the vibration isolator will not have any, any purpose of putting it here. It will just fail. You can see the picture over here. It's one of the uh, real picture which I've got. And the use, as, in, as I just said, purpose will miss. Another important point when you talk about maintenance, is to have an arrangement for removing because we are now putting 1000 tons, 500 tons, odd chillers. The, the, there are two compressors. The compressor weight is very high. The space is congested. When the compressor fails, then we don't have any space or arrangement to take out that compressor very fast. And that's why these arrangements of monorails, you can see this monorail, or you can see a portable monorail will help. This is very important. And as an engineer, as a HVC engineer, we must inform customer that this is what is required because one, one of the projects which I faced, it took around eight to 10 days to manually lift the compressor from its position. It went back to the manufacturer place. It took another month to get the compressor back. Again, to put it back, it took another eight to 10 days to put it back. And that was the one compressor. So you can imagine the amount of efforts and time which are required. And in the process, the compressor can get damaged because if you start handling manually, there are chances of getting damaged. So these are some of the uh, good practices which we can uh, inform customer and implement at the project stage. Because once the project is over, it is very difficult to uh, you know, uh, install such kind of arrangements. These are the monorail arrangement which I feel. This we have been using, uh, the automatic tube cleaning system. Earlier, we used to keep a lot of space for the condenser tube cleaning and you know the chillers and as i said since the chiller rooms are getting compact we don't have that kind of luxury of space to take out the tubes and do the cleaning and all yes it is still recommended but this is one of the system which is getting popularized now for tube cleaning system the next one is cooling tower now what is the best location for cooling tower it is as good as air cooled chillers and these are open spaces which are generally used and preferred here again, we should look at the starvation point of view when we talk about heat rejection because cooling tower, again, it's a, it's a medium to re, uh, reject heat into the water or into the uh, atmosphere. Now, fresh air availability is very important. And when we look at the fresh air availability, the availability uh, looks based on the kind of uh, open space which we get. Generally, again, we put most of the cooling towers on top of the uh, buildings. Second thing is recirculation. And when we talk about recirculation, we should see that the wall of the uh, building should be 
should not be higher than the cooling tower top. Otherwise, it will again create a artificially warm and humid environment because the the air circulation will just happen there and there, and it will not allow the air to get out of the building. So that's why we should be able to have a, or we should raise the cooling tower if you are not able to uh, reduce the wall uh, height of the wall of the building. So this is another important thing. And if you are still having problem, and if you are supposed to put some of the discharge ducts on top of the fans to to make sure that the air goes you know beyond the wall of the building then we should also look at the static of that fan otherwise again the fan will not perform so these are important things which we must see when we talk about cooling tower we talk about pressure we talk about the circulation second important thing is maintaining the distance between the tower same as as air cooled chillers arrangement of uninterrupted make a water tower make a water arrangement that is generally missed we always feel that it is plumbing job and we don't care but finally our system uh, is in problem right when we do this cooling tower and when we actually use this cooling tower there is a gap of at least 6 months and when when we start the cooling tower we suddenly feel that the basins are leaking so it is important before the cooling tower person leave the premises to do a basin uh, leak test and that will at least give an assurance that when you start the chillers, when you start the system, there will not be leakages. One of the important points which I faced in one of the one of the project was cooling tower. If they are not uh, supported properly, if they are not installed properly, one of the cooling tower just fell down while it was in operation. So it is important to see the strengthening of the foundations and the arrangement of the foundations to, to see that they don't get toppled. This is another important thing. Like I'm showing you two or three photographs over here. You can see the red scene over here. This is a building, this is a tower. This tower is supposed to work for a water cooled chiller, which are supposed are dedicated for uh, the theaters complex, right? In a mall. So that means the, the last show ends at around 12 o'clock in the night. So this tower is supposed to work till 12 o'clock in the night. And there are buildings, the residence flats are just away, just some meters away. And then the issue of noise becomes very important. The noise of air or the fan, as well as the noise of water dripping in the basin. These are two important noise we should consider. And we should educate the customer well in advance before you go for installation. Because once you install, then the complaints coming from the, the residents, it is very difficult to reinstall at some other place and to find some other issues. So it is this is very important to understand. That's why I've just picture you can see the distance between the Building over here, it's hardly anything. And cooling tower is supposed to make noise. And those noise, and in the, in the night period, will have a major impact on the residents. So this is what I want to talk about. Another thing, you can see the two pictures over here. One is before, next is after. Again, I'm coming here to maintenance over here. You can see there is no space for maintenance. And you can see the next step, there are a lot of uh, space which is being created. The ladders are being created to take care of the maintenance because these are all rotating equipments. Any equipments can fail, and we must uh, should not look for any other alternatives when the system fails. So it is better to provide proactively. You can see the difference between the two pictures very, very visibly over here. Another important thing is role of drip elevator, which generally is delivered at site, but when we install, we miss it because that the cooling tower is is supplied in very, very uh, dismantled conditions are various parts, but we generally, uh, you know, at site misses this some of the components, and we feel it is not important. Drip limiter is very very important to avoid the water losses, the to the atmosphere. We can uh, get a lot of good efficiency in terms of water consumption, and these are nothing but these are the drip limiters over here. So when the water tries to escape from here, this drip limiter will, you know, uh, actually avoid water getting out of this so this is one you can see over here the water drop is coming here and when we put the drip perimeters the water droplets actually remain inside the cooling tower so these are some of the good practices this is what it happens and we talk about cooling tower and pump installation we always have problems and that's why the flood suction is very very important the pump which is tackling to the cooling tower should not get into the position of dry run. And that's why flood such flooded suction has to be very important. So it is important to understand the position of the cooling tower and the position of the pumps 
so that you always have a flooded suction into the pump. So this is what the flooded suction is talked about over here. And this is how the system works. You can see the pump is always in a, a flooded suction. So you have to see this arrangement of flooded suction when we talk about cooling tower. Next, we're going to talk about is pumps. Pumps we install on a, on a civil foundations. Again, these are should not be installed on a sensitive areas because again, these are an element of vibration. We will try and do minimize vibration, but we cannot eliminate the vibration. That's very important. We have see the use of inertia blocks and spring isolator. Again, the space for maintenance is very, very important. You will see the uh, flexible bellows. Uh, you can say, arrest the vibration or minimize the vibration. We must be able to uh, isolate all the rotating equipments so that the transfer of vibration from rotating equipment to the pipes and to the structure doesn't happen. So if you try, if you, uh, you know, isolate the chiller, it is important to isolate the cooling tower. It is important to isolate the pumps. It is important to isolate the HUs. Otherwise, if you don't isolate in it, uh, or if you do 50% of isolation, it is not going to help us. So this is very important to understand. Guard over alignment, we can see just, this is a part of inertia block, which, which is being used now on multiple projects. Where is the inertia block is not uh, touching to the foundation of the main foundation or main floor over here, because there's a spring isolator, which actually with the lifting screw, take care of this foundation. So look at this uh, inertia block over, and this is the installation which happens where the foundation is actually a floating foundation. And this is what happens. You can see the on the left-hand side, these are the inertia blocks over here. Now there is an element of uh, weight of the inertia block with respect to the uh, dynamic weight of the pumps. And it is generally the inertia block has to be twice of the weight of the pump. But if you have a situation like this, which, which is made, uh, seen over here, the inertia block weight with including the concrete weight is becoming lesser than the dynamic weight of the pump, twice the dynamic weight. So that's what, what is happening is we have to provide some reinforcement plate. These plates are put to get the right weight of the inertia block. So this is another important thing. If you uh, miss it in the design, we must be able to implement when we do this. So this is what is being done over here. And there's a concrete pouring over here. Then there are pumps over here, which are installed on top of it. And these pumps are then with the vibration isolator, you can see over here, the installation is complete. <coughs> when you talk about the pump connections, we must or uh, we don't get such kind of luxury, but this is recommended to have a eccentric reducer. This is to avoid the cavitation. We we should at least get five to 10, not even 10, but at least between five to 10 diameter of this distance piece over here. And we always should go for long radius elbows. We try and reduce some of the cost over the year by to, taking short radius that has larger impact on the cavitation and the system efficiency. So it is important to have a long radius elbows at least at this important points over here. And when we talk about the supports, we should give supports over here. Or there is another element called stress analysis, which we'll talk a little later. So this, this, this pump is isolated over here with the vibration isolator. And when we you want to see after the installation, whether the installation has gone right or wrong, we can have this kind of checklist. These are sample checklist, which you can see whether it is installed as per drawing, is it installed as per the manufacturer recommendation? Are the uh, nut and bolts are checked? Is the identification done for the pumps? Everything is mentioned over here. You can just stick, not sitting in the office, but by going to the site and get it approved so that your installation is complete. This checklist will be able to give you, uh, you know, a surety that the installation is perfect. And it has to be uh, going to site and seeing this and putting it into the sheet. Otherwise, uh, just for making the sheet, you can make a lot of sheets. One of the important thing, which again, is this is nothing but for seismic snubber. You can see seismic snubbers over here. These are again, just an attachment to the inertia block so that in case of earthquake, the pumps do not topple. So this is another element, good installation practice of having seismic snubber. The cost is not much. The cost is not much. This will give a lot of importance when we install this. Another element you can see over here, is the pumps are supported, the piping is supported with a lot of arrangements you can see here. There's a pipe which is uh, coming from the main pipe, then there's a plate, then there's a puff gutty because the chilled water pumps, 
the uh, the condensation should not transfer to one from this pipe to this pipe this is a, this is a bare pipe so the puff cut you over here and again there is a plate then we have pipe then we again have a plate and this plate is not touching to the the foundation over here this this is resting on the four nut bolts and this will give a uh, element of you can say a motion or movement the vertical movement uh when the pumps are in operation so it is not rigid over here again so this is another element of good cross practice where we can have a, a a flexible kind of arrangement to take care of any vertical movement or deflection and this is a good arrangement which we can install again this pipes can be taken from the scraps and used you can you can go to scrap and you can find and a lot of things can be improved your installation you can see over here in the picture can be better with these two attachment one is this attachment second is this chase mix number next next we go and go to go into air handling units uh, these are the pictures of air handling units one of the important factor which i talked about speed here is ceiling suspended units when we try to install manually you at least need six to eight people to install and you can get maximum two or three units per team per day but if you have thousands of uh, ceiling suspended units then what do we do we will not have the luxury of having manpower and the time so this is one of the element which we found out is uh, use of forklift and make a, a fixtures for supporting this uh, units and just by putting on this fixtures you can go on installing the units and you can at least install 10 to 12 units with two to three people maximum two people just to do this nut bolt the anchor fasten and thing <clears throat> so this kind of innovation such site can help to increase the speed of the installation and this is very very relevant and this is real here again we should use the right anchor fasteners the right full threaded rods let us not cut corner there and we should use right spring isolator when i talk about right uh, anchor fastener there have been cases uh, which i heard that the units have fallen down and most of the ceiling suspended units are put to, to save the space so that they can have work station below the unit right and if someone is below and the unit falls what happens to that person he will either get injured or there will be fatal so it is important to understand the small small element of this anchor fastener you can see this is how it has been done there was a fixture created and the machine was installed you can see how it is not resting on one anchor fastener there are four anchor fasteners if one fails the other takes in so this is another element of using it you can see over here anchor fastener then the threaded rods the vibration isolator or has to be properly installed so you can see the kind of installation which can be done uh, with minimum of expenses so ensure the safety and the speed and obviously the quality so three elements we are taking care of here this is the installation you can see yeah you can see the uh, vibration isolator over here the rods the correct rods again the rods might fail uh, another view of the installation these are the, the floor mounted installation you can see that this is the indian installation not middle east installation so it can happen and this is another installation you can see how on a, a simple strip of ms strip these are hanged so both are in india but you can have the difference of installation when you talk about uh, air handling units or csus we should always ensure this return space is behind or we have problems in the in the later part of our project to hand over the project we should have a proper build guard the build guard again supplied but not installed we should have a bulb inside a marine light so that you can see for maintenance and you should always have a side glass before you open the uh, <clears throat> door you should see what is everything is perfect or not in one of the instance the person opened the door and the pulley came out and hit its face so it is important to have a small 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 issues to have a light on see from the side glass whether everything is right and then open the door so this is very important another important thing is having a limit switch so that when we uh, when we open the door the the blow stops but the blow doesn't stop immediately right so there are chances that the the pulley can come out and hit you and that has happened practically this is how we installed you can you can see our equipments are getting uh, you know used for support for cable so this must be avoided when when we are at site we should be able to have 
our presence failed and avoid such kind of issues here and <clears throat> one of the important thing is again a drain we talk about u trap and all those things and this is one of the uh, good example over here where what has happened is the drain pipe which is connected to the drain of the pan is also connected to the chill water kind of piping connections so that when you want to drain a portion of pipe uh, pipe uh, water from here then you can drain it from the same pipe so this is another good practice where you got you are using a drain pipe for dual purpose one to drain the pipe of uh, chill water pipe water as well as to drain the condenser water drain so these are some of the arrangements which we have to see <clears throat> one of the important arrangement here is the uh, when we do the installation and when we find when we put the water inside we feel the leakage in the coil so it is important to see the test of the coils and get the nitrogen filled coils at site so we will be able to immediately recognize whether there is a nitrogen there or not there rather than putting the water before the commissioning and finding there is a coil leakage so this is another good uh, part where we can insist our suppliers to give and most of the suppliers now now are giving it we talked about side glass another important part is arrangement of fire dampers with respect to the hu we we put the fire damper we put the air handling unit we put the uh, electrical panels but there is no integration the fire dampers are stand alone each user operating in its own fashion all the arrangement is done but the last minute the last ball you can see in a cricket is missed we don't integrate this and it is very important to integrate because it is related to the life and safety of the people and we put a lot of money in getting all those things but we don't integrate it's very important to integrate this and when you talk about a choose we can use such kind of checklist to see that the installation is perfect a lot of elements are put in over here you can add based on your own project but a checklist can be created which will help you to see that installation is correct and this reports will be able to help you in future also then we go to fcus uh, mostly in hotels now uh, the flexible kind of arrangement for the because this is one of the uh, you know bottle like in most of the project the piping copper piping for the fcus sometimes it goes off the tray then the condensation happens it become very chaotic but look at this installation you can see over here a very good installation again in india and when you open this uh, ceiling you can see the kind of installation is done one of the experience which i want to show you is the selection of the actuators of the pibc wall or control walls which you use the the actuator selection has to be with respect to the pressure rating otherwise what happens is the because of the high pressure the actuator doesn't stop the water flow because the pressure is very really high and it is not rated for that kind of pressure and the continuous water goes on and there are uh, instances of having sweating inside the room sweating inside the hotel room because there is no pressure inside the sweating happens so this is very important to understand and look at the rating of this wall as well as the actuator we can create a lot of templates for installation because fcus are generally not uh, coming Uh, within the time frame, so we can create the installation. We can every, keep everything ready, and when the uh, FCU comes with this uh, template, we can go on installing. So that will add your speed. Drain is again very sensitive. Lighting arrangement on top of it is again important. One of the questions which I want to ask for here is: Do we need a trap door for FCU? If the installation is correct, if everything is uh, all the dirts are removed from that place, do we need? temporary uh, do we need permanent access door we can get away with that if the installation is perfect and if there are 400 fcus in hotel do you need to have 400 trap doors if our if you are not sure about our installation then yes we do we need those but we if you are sure about it we can just create a temporary access close the ceiling this this has been done in one of the project and whenever out of 400 fcus if we have one issue or two issues we can always cut the ceiling and get it it is Uh, easy and good aesthetic if you don't provide the access door and provide it when it requires so this is another element which depends upon our quality of installation whether we need a permanent access door or we need a temporary access door for commission one of the food for thought for all of us we can use again such kind of excel uh, the checklist for fan coil units and see everything is proper or no then we talk about fans fans are again vibrating elements so you can see the installation over here a proper installation with four fasteners over here 
with uh, isolator over here, a jet fan with four isolators over here, large fans, huge installation. You can see again vibration isolator. These are floor mounted fans, these are big axial fans. And you can also see this kind of installation. Look at this kind of installation, which is the project is in installation stage. It is not at commission so far. And the, the kind of installation we can see, we will get ashamed of ourselves. This is one of the area which uh, this small, small points, logical point we must see. Again, we can use a lot of accessories for clips to install the fans. This is one of the installation. You can see the vibration isolator over here. This is nothing but a kind of snubber. You can see over here, there's a rubber pad. You can see these snubbers over here. This is the vertical channel and there's a rubber pad. So even in case of earthquake, these fans will be intact. So these are all innovative areas where we can work upon. Again, this, this MS channel, you can find in scrap and put it, but you can come out with good. You can see over here again, since there is no, uh, there's a rubber pad between the, on the slab. So that when the fan touches, if try to touch, it doesn't harm the fan. And there is no vibration feeding transfer to this structure. So small, small things can be, uh, you know, helpful for installation. Again, swing isolator, anchor fasteners, access panel for access to the fans and electrical uh, panels is very important when we look at the installation of fans. We can create again such kind of checklist to so see that everything is perfect. The, the maintenance part is taken care and the checklist can be signed off and can be uh, an assurance for all of us too that the installation is perfect. Next very important topic which I'm going to get into this ducting. Here, I tried to interview many people and when I asked people who have got three or four years of experience, what are the standards in, of, of ducting fabrication? People only give gauges, people only give this gauge for this size and no one is aware of what it is. So it is very important as an engineer, as an engineer supervisor or site engineer to understand what is ducting supposed to be on your project. So this kind of sheet will be able to give you an idea what kind of sizes, what are the joints, what are the reinforcement, what are the longitudinal joints, what are the bracings? It is in one picture. And it doesn't take much time. You can take the tenders and get this information so that at least you are aware of what you're doing and not totally dependent upon the duct fitter who is just fabricating ducts out of it, out of his experience. He doesn't know what is the specification. And these things also can be converted into a benchmark where you can call the duct fitters and give them training about what is ducting on this project rather than just asking them and go and fabricate. So this is one area you can find all the elements are fitting over here. All the elements are fitting over here, class, size, everything is put in over here. Duct support working, what kind of channel I should use? There's a, there's a proper method of calculation of it. If I want to use 40 by 40 by three as a bottom channel, and uh, this is a rod size, six mm rod, whether it is sufficient or not, so we must know what is the load of the duct with the insulation. We must know if there is someone who sits on the top of the duct and that weight is unexpected load over here. What is the total load? Then we'll be able to find out whether with that total load, this support and this thread rod or that fastener is sufficient or not. So this is another area which we need to look at because there are incidents of duct falling after installation, during operation, because of such incidents. These are some of the uh, elements of duct where ducts, flanges, gaskets, the C cleats, the corners are being shown over here. And this is a complete duct when we assemble everything. Very important to understand the requirement, to understand the process. And we'll go to that process a little later. We should not, I'll show some of the photographs, installation of veins in elbows. These are all very, very important things. And another important thing is closing the gaps or closing the joints with the sealants, because that is one of the area where we uh, lose a lot of energy by gi giving away the a cold air into the atmosphere or into the area which is not required. So these are some of the photographs of how do we store the ducts. And this is a process which is called benchmarking process where the list of material for carrying out a ducting, a complete ducting system is mentioned here. What are the technical submittals for it? And what is the purpose of that material is mentioned over here. So this gives a full clarity to the people and what are the equipments we are installed required. Right from drill machine to duct testing to the laser levels, to the hammer, to the allen key, everything is mentioned over here. So it gives us with the pictures, including plumb, measuring tape is mentioned over here. 
then what is the work procedure so we start with the <clears throat> with the uh, marking with the marking then we install the fasteners we drill the fasteners then we install the supports we do the acoustic insulation if it is required on the ducts the ducts are installed the, the gaps are on the sealants that applied on the joints and then we go for leak test of the machine so if this process if you convert into various languages of tamil hindi marathi whatever the duckman will be able to understand what is required on the project then we install the duct and finally we insulate the duct and close the entire ducting so this is these processes can be done for all the processes like piping ducting insulation electrical cabling so that everyone on the project is aware of what is to be done these are some of the photographs one of the important thing is to put stickers identifications will help you in long run if this wall gets built up and after some years if you want to open and see which is the duct rather than checking into drawing because we don't generally miss in even as built drawing right we generally the, the duct in as built drawing will be shown somewhere here but installed somewhere here if we put in instead that the right identifications it will help you in long run which is the what is the purpose of the duct and what it is doing right another important area that we miss is not getting the branches to the grills and this is where the grid work is important we have a lot of fights with the with the interior people but this is how it is done you can see the place that grid work is properly given over here and right locations are given and <clears throat> once we ask we get it if you don't ask we will have problems later air will not come in the return air temperature is better the room temperature is hotter all these issues come in we lose lot of energy in pumping the more air and the air goes into the ceiling so this is what can be avoided if you have collars at the right position by taking the right grid work <clears throat> otherwise we do this you can see major lapses over here look at this collar look at this collar look at this collar all nothing is in line and we have issues little later some of the important things where <coughs> sorry we get away we can get away with lot of welding other things in a typical installations lot of tools are available lot of accessories are available to, to support your ducts you can see this one of the example beam clamp beam clamp very easy don't have to weld and then take a support these are available it's, and if you do a cost comparison or cost benefit this comes out to be cheaper because the efforts are less right another important tools don't go by the not the names but these are some of the tools which will help you to improve the productivity good tools helps in speed again as said and both quality and the third part of safety if you use all these things all those three elements which i talked about in my first slide will be taken care of right the seam lockers the plumb meters the, the laser guides the power drill without any cable these are battery operated drills will help you the rebar locator we try and use the try, drill you know trial and error method to find out then the rebar comes again we hit drill somewhere else so this can be avoided with the rebar locator so you get right place right hole <coughs> again look at what happens we store like this or we store like this these are live pictures from some of the sites so this is what is the difference between and this is difference is only because of people who are handling the job nothing else we cannot blame the labors for this look at this right way of doing the ducting look at see this duct this is one of the installation which i took photograph the the collar is taking out taken out from the elbow and there was no air the jet nozzles are used for bottom throw <clears throat> this is one of the big hall which i visited look at this kind of installation the right ducting with right tools a duct lifter is getting used over here and look at this you can see the left hand side picture how well it is done and the right hand side picture everything is good material is good insulation is good only issue is the supervision and that will kill our reputation in the market look at this everything was done but then the the diffuser core has to be removed because the air was not coming so something is wrong over here right so this should not happen and look at this the neatly installed uh, diffusers and all everything is working good and look at this the ducts are getting used as support and no who, the person with available site doesn't care about it because he sees once it's installed it's over but when it comes to commissioning so 10% of uh, payment will get held up neatly installed again 
you can see <clears throat> the duct size is higher and we are not rested upon one eye fastener here there are two fasteners and there's channel and a rod because of the duct weight and duct size we cannot rely on one fastener so actually for this support there are four fasteners two here and two on other side so this is how small smallest things can be taken care to avoid uh, any safety issues and to improve your quality the neat installation you can see very well uh, done installation your eyes can be uh, these photos can be pleasing to your eyes and that's what is very important with the round ducts the next one is pre insulated ducts which is getting used over here <clears throat> again some of the installations of pre insulated ducts flexible ducts and i'll show you how the flexible ducts are used you can see <clears throat> they are used to avoid the inefficiencies of the at site you can see the long long radius duct this air will come you can see the condition of this flexible duct over here look at this duct <coughs> look at this duct so flexible ducts are used for specific purpose right and if you if you use it like this it will better you can see the picture you can relate this with the image over here the properly supported flexible ducts and the proper insulation ducts will be able to give you right performance and this is what is expected out of this again for ducting you can create a checklist and see everything is taken care this checklist i am showing a sample over here that you can create for your own uh, own uh, job sites so it will help you next we are going to go in piping this is typical piping layouts a pipe schematic drawings schematic drawings and this is the output of the piping again all the photographs which i am showing is not from middle east most of them are from india and when you see this kind of piping <clears throat> you will feel wow right because ducting we can get away because it goes most of the duct goes into the false ceiling but piping is one area we should be able to proudly get new customers and see this is what we can do so this is what it it gives and when we talk about piping we use msc class pipes msb class pipes for drain other things uh the rises which are given over here <clears throat> pipes are given in 6 feet now you can see the specification over here for different size of pipe which which kind of specifications or which kind of standards we see we again have to look at what are the good practices piping routes have to be found out we should <clears throat> get into we generally go for butt welding what is butt welding the these photographs speaks for themselves can you see the welding quality over here this is what is expected from a welder a good welder right and this is the procedure this wps procedure this is as per is 10234 everything is explained over here a good welder will be able to give justice for this kind of this thing when we talk about piping supports there is an element of called stress analysis because pipes are generally grouted connected to the equipments grouted to the mini areas and we must be able to find out what are the real stress points in the piping and the supports have to be given there generally practice that you put pipe supports at 2 meter and 3 meters that's the general practice but if you want to do a proper supporting then you must be able to get the right stresses if customer gives you that kind of freedom and give the supports where it is required most of the time we end up giving supports where support is not required and this is the stress analysis which can give you you can see some of the stress analysis were done over here you can see the stresses which is coming here in the pipes you can see this pipe which is getting twisted because in operation this kind of stimulation is can be done and you can find out where the supports have to be given based on the stimulation one of the good practice over here you can see this kind of support this is called cradle clamps this is a pipe this is a pop insulation then there is a gi sheet and these are clamps uh, which are from the two holes and then they are joined by two uh nut bolts this gives flexibility for the pipe for a free movement by having a support as well so this is another good practice which can be used on our projects to see that the pipes are not rigidly held because moment you try to do uh, any movement uh, you know kind of thing and and you know <clears throat> cramp it then it will have further effects so it is important to have a right kind of supports and look at look at this kind of supports 
again these are done with clamp uh, cradle clamps kind of supports and what is the supports what is the basis for having this kind of support what kind of fastener should use which kind of vertical member to be used which kind of uh, channels to be used what kind of how many number of fasteners to be used this is given in the supports so we generally install the supports on rods and it is become rambor say if it falls have problem but do some analysis because most of us are engineers and we should be able to do analysis while arriving at the supports you can get like this kind of supports this kind of u straps the, the cradle clamp which i told you was for the higher size of pipe but for smaller size of pipe you can use this u strap to hold the pipes and have a little bit of movement as well this is the u strap <clears throat> working and these are some of the live pictures uh, the pictures actual pictures from the sites how the supports have been put you can see the kind of support that we installed kind of pipe of uh, around 40 plus 5 inch of dia you can see supports this is the pipe connection for the hus the bellows the drains the air vents everything is taken care here the supports you can see uh, some of the piping getting installed over here some of the supports some of the supports over here even for 25 mm dia pipe the kind of support is required based on the stress analysis is different so generally we try and put supports near the elbow but in this stress analysis the stress comes here so it, it depends upon the calculations rather than going by just a uh, standard process kind of support and this is what i told you about the supports you know this pipe is welded to mother pipe then there's a plate then the pub bagatti comes in and the next pipe comes in there's a plate and then the then there are nut bolts this is the u strap you can see over here and there is a to avoid any condensation there is a clamp which is going here one more clamp which is supported on the support so it is not the pub get be resting on directly on the uh, support because there is a barrier which is given to avoid direct contact of pub get to the support over here so you can see the supporting for the smallest dia pipe this is a big picture again you can see that clamp over here then the pub gutty and you can see the fastener number of fasteners are two over here because the pipe size must be small another important part over here you can see this a cradle clamp the kind of fittings which we use this is called dead end a uh, dish end we generally use a plate at the dead end and that plate is most of the stress area into the piping system so it is important to have limited stress over there and that's why this kind of dish ends will be able to help you to reduce the stress at that point of time if you are not able to put a plank you have to put a dish end so that is the pressure at this point of time the stress in this point of joint is very very less so these are some of the elements which can be used in piping this is what i talked about the cradle clamp you can see the cradle clamp over here you can use it uh, for larger type of pipes and otherwise what we do is we take a supports like this you can see the condition of the pipe the condition of the supports the supports the pipes are supported by wire the pipes are supported by uh, ms wire the electrical wires and this is what happens pipes are supported by cable tray so this is what happens and look at these pictures it will give you pleasing <clears throat> you know picture in front of you everything is well coordinated over here you can see the supports over here the kind of supports how they are installed you can see over here the next picture the next picture is all piping pictures which i am trying to show you the various views of these installations how the supporting is done over here and these are done based on the stress analysis you can see the pictures the pictures the plant room pictures otherwise what we do is like this you can see the pipes are not even supported you can see the difference the pipes are supported the way it is pointed out now when we talk about piping again the anchor passes come the picture when we do a welding the <coughs> the welding this thing has to be removed and all the weld joints have to be properly identified by a primer and there are couple of things which i want to tell you one is called <clears throat> a reinforcement pad in piping 
So when we take out the tapping from the pipes, that portion of the pipe becomes weaker. To strengthen that uh, portion, what we do is we provide a reinforcement pad. This is a reinforcement pad. This is a pipe, a pipe material which comes out the mother pipe. So you can see these pipes uh, sections. These are installed over the tappings and welded over here. So what happens? It gives a strength over here. These are called reinforcement pads. Very important information in piping. Another things which we talk about is so collet and weldolet. These are the pictures over here. And this is the table which will tell you for a taking of tap, what should we use? Whether we should use socket weld tee, butt weld tee, <clears throat> reinforcement pad, the so collet, for what kind of piping dimension. So this is the header size and this is the branch size. So which are the fittings to use? This gives a good installation of piping. Uh, this is the right installation of piping. So this table will be able to give you from 15 mm to 42 inch tire pipes, all the relevant details about the tappings and the fittings to be used. So you can see some of these fittings These are called so-called weldolates and threadolates. Avoid board numbers in piping. We can sh I'll show you one of these things. Always use eccentric reducer. We talked about it. Proper fittings, we talked about it. One of the important thing for a condenser water pipe is called wear pad. You can see this installation over here. Now, when the pipe touches to the, the support, there is another uh, uh, plate, which again, a part of pipe is cut and put as an additional layer. So this will have, this will take care of the wear of the uh, wear and tear of the pipe in a long run. So this is called wear pad, where another pipe, pipe section is cut and then attached to the pipe where the supports are being installed. So this comes only at the supporting place. You can see some of the wear pads over here. Otherwise, what you get here is without wear pads, you can see there's the chances of rusting, which already happens, and the damage to the pipe started. With wear pads, that damage can be avoided, right? Look at the kind of elbows. One, two, this is a 25 meter pipe. One, two, three, four, five, and this pipe runs into meters, and you will not find water inside the HU. When we talk about HU connections, we have to talk about dielectric coupling, where one side you get brass, another side you get steel. These are some of the good gaskets, which we get, uh, get in the market. Generally, we use those rubber gaskets, but these are the, uh, in terms of long use, these gaskets are important. Pre-insulated pipes we have been using. <clears throat> and the next element is victolic pipe, or we can say groove fittings. That is another way to reduce a lot of welding at site. This is another good practice we can use. When we talk about the testing of pipe, we generally use 1.5 times of working pressure for 24 hours. But DP test is another quick way of identifying where we use you know, the, uh, the relevant uh, penetrators and we apply it, then we clean it. If there's a leak or is there a crack in the building, you can get indication. So this is a quick way of identifying whether your welding quality is good or not. So DP tests are being done. We'll talk about good practices. How can we reduce the ma manual intervention and lifting the pipe is one of the area which I wanted to put it. When you still use man to shift the pipe, you can use the shoulder pads so that the pipes are not touching to a shoulder directly. That the shoulder pad which, which comes in as a barrier. We can use a lot of elements of, again, such lifters, even the forklifts to lift the pipes rather than uh, lifting manually. We have talked about reinforcement pads and gear pads. This is another checklist for piping, which will help us in getting the installation is right or wrong. Copper pipes, again, similar thing. It's all about workmanship and how well we can do it. The right supporting, otherwise you get such kind of piping or you get this good piping and the right kind of brazing techniques, the right use of Y joints, generally for, or you can get such kind of installation in copper piping. This is another good installation for copper piping. You get such installation, or you get such installation. You can see left hand side picture and the right hand side picture. The use of cable trays, the right clamps, the right supports are used on the left hand side. Right hand side is just uh, the way you want to. So this is another, some of the pictures are good installation pictures from actual pictures. Then we talk about install insulation. Various materials being used on insulation. One of the elements which you missed is vapor barrier, and we get a lot of issues related to condensation. And that is 
There are a lot of elements of uh, outside protection for the insulation being used. You can see the pipe, insulation, vapor barrier, protective jacket, a lot of things. Not even insulation, but some of the good installations you can see on the right hand side. These are some of the good installations which are used uh, with the same material. This is with the puff and this is with nitrile element. But in the reality, you can see some of the pictures. The nitrile lever is used, the entire pipe is sweating. The water is below inside the car, car park. And the water is like rain there. You can see these pictures. The water is they're totally wet. Water is dripping over here. You can see water droplets over water. This is a uh, operation uh, mall, one of the mall which I visited. You can see entire cloth is wet and a lot of energy loss. Tarpaulins are being put. Uh, even after putting the tarpaulin, you can see the kind of water which is getting in. Because water gets accumulated, again it falls. So these are some of the installations which we do. Again, a checklist, but such things should be avoided and we should always aim for such kind of insulation, such kind of insulation, such kind of insulation. Because insulation is very, very critical for HVAC. We talk about ducting insulation, we use fiberglass, we use nitrile rubber, right kind of material, right kind of application, cleaning of the duct before installation, proper protection on top of the installation is required. You can see some of the good pictures over here. One of the good element which you can see over here there's a puff gutty between the support and the insulation because the nitrile rubber is soft to avoid crack, which is because of coming in contact with the metal over here. There's a puff gutty which is put inside. So this will give you a uh, good <clears throat> quality and uh, damage. It will avoid the damage to the nitrile rubber. See, you can see the puff gutty over here and you can see the how well the insulation has been done. This is one of the good photographs which I have got. You can see the corners are protected over here. You can see the puff gutty over here and the good installation. You can see the flange installation, which is done very neatly on the job site. Again, for duct insulation, you can use such checklist for acoustic insulation. Again, we go for glass wool or nitrile rubber, but this is another element which I wanted to tell you. This is the bare duct before the acoustic. What is to be done? The next step is to put the angles inside. Then we put the bitumen or the cold adhesive inside. Then we install the, the fiberglass. We complete the uh, insulation and then we install it. So this, if you show it to any layman, he'll be able to help you. He'll be able to understand properly. So what is to be acoustically insulated? If you do this duct once and show it to the people, then it will give you a lot of uh, good consistency in a project. This is with our, the metal level. Again, a checklist for duct acoustic. Room acoustic, again, the procedure remains same, but this is what we do after doing good acoustic, then we go and if we forget some ducts and we remove. Once you do this rectification, you can't get the same quality back. This is very, very important. Again, checklist for plantar acoustic, under deck insulation, various methods based on the surfaces which we are going to use, whether we're going to, going to stick to the slab or we are going to have a structure are we going to have <clears throat> any other uh, uh, kind of structure which can be used? Based on that, we can use. Very important, uh, another important is electrical. We generally go and put pipe, electrical panels below the pipes. We don't know what is the impact of not having a right panel for outdoor conditions, and then we have issues. And this is like dealing with the uh, you know life of the people. So it is important to have right panels with right calibration and all the elements which are not getting connected to the panel have to be plugged off. So you must be able to plug off all unused peg cable because we will have holes for different cables. Some of the cables are not utilized. Those have to blank off. Otherwise, there are chances of the rats and other things going in, water going in and creating a lot of issues. Always put rubber mat in front of operating area of the panel. You can see this is the panel installation. You can see the rubber mat is in front of the panel. How well the, the cables are connected. Look at these uh, small control panels. Cablings, correct cablings, right earthing, putting the earthing at place. I will show some of the photographs, right kind of cable train, right kind of glands, 
are important because when you talk about electricity it is dealing with the life and death of the people so we can use such checklist look at these cables how well they are installed each one has become artist and try to install the cables look at this where is the arthing the arthing is copper whether it is making any purpose of putting it because the arthing is not connected or there is a loss of arthing so it is very important to understand this all you can look at these pictures how well they are done how well dressing has been done how well the identification has been done for the cable so it is flawless or you can see the cable tray on the left hand side you can see the kind of supports one washer and one nut it is installed and you can see the right hand side support how the cable tray is installed so there are two different things we can see from here try to do shortcuts on our projects you can see how well the cable tray is supported you can look at the clamps for smallest of the cable tray we can help you to get good quality output of the insertion and the and when i get into the next thing i will talk about little thing about prefabrication because however we try to do work at site it will because of the irregularity of the people who are coming to the site we don't know the welder just come today will come tomorrow so there is a consistency issue so it's important to go for maximum work done in the off site and that is called prefabrication and for which a beam is very important this picture can show you on the left hand side a wardrobe this is our normal drawings and with the beam you can see the right hand side wardrobe the two i just wanted to give a flavor of what is beam this is what we get as a normal design and this is what we get as a beam and this can be used for your good quality installation for tracking your progress this is very very you can see duct installed at site duct not erected or duct will be erected next side everything can be mapped on beam and most important thing it will help you to do prefabrication prefabrication will allow you better power execution reduction in wastage safety quality cost reduction less dependency on site labor faster uh, turn around and this is what it actually gives you it gives you a parallel working some works which can be done at site can be done at site and some works which can be done at factory can be done parallelly so if you look at this get a beam output do a dedicated crew outside put racks over here get this racks install into your project site and get your work completed like this so this is where we are heading now and some of the contracts are now asking for prefabrication because of three things which i talked about in my first slide quality safety and time and this will take care of this the best way to predict future is to create it and it depends on all of us to create the better installation for our clients i'll go quickly now to the safety part uh, saloni hope i am able to you are able to hear me yes sir of course you are very okay. clear so next point we are going to talk about is hvac safety and hvac projects and when we talk about safety it's people working together to create a safe environment you cannot identify one person and make him responsible for safety these people come to our site to work for us and it is important for us to make sure that they go out of site without any injury to them and that is as a management this is our responsibility and it's our prime responsibility to ensure that no harm is done to these people the people come from different part of the country to earn their bread and the family is waiting for them so it is important to get that gentleman back or get that lady back to the home with all of his you know hands and and feet with intact and that is our prime responsibility now look at this do you know who is responsible for your safety and the mirror will tell it's you so it's not someone else it's all of us who are responsible for safety construction side you can see the <clears throat> international labor ilo has given that 165 out of every 1000 workers are injured on construction sites so this is a reality whatever we are trying to do but this is a reality and what are the challenges in construction industry in india there are cultural gap because people come from different places to work to earn their bread and butter the lack of safety awareness the competency is a issue this is unorganized sector we depend mostly on unskilled and uh, non competent people and there are social hazards 
the issues about labor camps and other things. So these are all issues which are we are crippling with for industry, uh, the construction industry. We are, we are also part of it. So what is an accident? Accident is an injury and it, it happens because of two things, because of unsafe acts or because of unsafe conditions. Unsafe act is nothing but inadequacies in behavior of injured person. The person who was in, involved in the accident, because of his behaviors, he comes and meet with an accident. So that is unsafe act. Unsafe condition, because of the conditions which are created, whatever precaution he had taken, because of that unsafe condition, he met with an accident. So these are the basic causes of an accident. And what are the rules? We must be able to devise rules to prohibit it unsafe act. To not allow any person to take that kind of action which are unsafe, right? And when you talk about unsafe condition, we must be able to technically devise the uh, condition which is good for people to work there. Safe conditions for people to work there. So these are two basic safeguards against these two basic causes. There are only two causes for an accident. Unsafe act, unsafe conditions. And either we create right rules or we create the right conditions. These are two safeguards to avoid in the accident site where we are part of it. Now, what is, what is the difference between unsafe act and unsafe conditions? This is unsafe act. This is unsafe act. It knowingly, is, all these two people are coming below this. And this is unsafe conditions. So there's a crack over here. This is unsafe condition. So these are another area. Getting below this hook or the lifting element is unsafe act. Getting below this forklift lifting is unsafe act. But this is also an unsafe condition. So this is a combination of both over here. So in this incidence or accident happens only because of unsafe act and unsafe conditions. HVC projects are generally carried along with the construction. So we become part of the construction. We become part of the problem. We become part of the hazards which are actually available. Now, how do we take care of those hazards? It's very, very important because we cannot isolate ourselves from the site. So we are part of it. So HVAC projects, we cannot say. So understanding site is very important on a daily basis. Because site is a dynamic. Everything, every day, new things happen at site. So daily understanding before starting the work is very important. And that is why toolbox talk daily, very important. Again, the toolbox talk should not be for fashion statement. They should be able to establish a communication with the workmen that this is the area which is unsafe today. This is the area which is safe today. This has to be told to the people. And this is how the work has to be done. And the regular site analysis has to be done. Hazard identification and risk analysis has to be done on a continuous basis so that we don't get trapped into this unsafe condition. So these are some of the elements before we move ahead. And when we talk about HVC, which we talked a little before, major activities are one of these ducting. So ducting installation, one of the major uh, problem which we get is the cut to the hands or to the parts of our body because of the sharp edges when we use GI ducting. So this is one of the area of concern when you talk about ducting as an activity and going into activity not to the full site. So this is what can prevent you by having a proper gloves that will avoid to use or to avoid to have cuts. And another important thing is when you look at the lifting of the duct, so you can see some of the large ducts where a crane and a scissor lift is also required. The right kind of tools have to be given. It cannot be done manually. You have to give this kind of tools so that people are safe. They are so these are creation of safe conditions for people to go and work, right? So these are some of the elements in ducting which we can do. Like this, the 12 meter height ducting, what kind of elements are required rather than pushing people into unsafe zone by not giving such kind of tools. Here the boom leaves or scissor leaves are required. Otherwise ducting becomes very, very risky, right? Some of the tools to avoid manual intervention is duct lifter. Again, a very good element of tools which can be used to avoid the manual intervention. So these are some of the tools which can be used. So what are the risks? As I said, one is when we shift the ducts, there's a man, there's an injury to body of the body parts, injury to the fingers. Vertical risers are one of the high risk element where there are shafts in which we install the ducts. If one goes inside the shaft, you will not come, in, come out again. So very important to understand. We use a lot of tools 
and that's why i said battery operated tools we use the electrical cables for drill machines and all so electrical safety is very important this is where we have to shift from normal those cable or drill machines to a power drill it will take care of most of our here electrical related issues with respect to ducting when you talk about piping it's all about hot work you can see the buildings now you can see the person over here this is called fire watcher and this is a booth this is having a blanket called fire blanket he is working in a safe condition where the the sparks are not going out from this booth and if anything happens still this man is there a fire watcher which trained to operate the fire extinguisher this is required now you can see what is the cost of the person but the cost of the life is more than the cost of the giving the salary to the person so it is important to understand this important to really how use of such forklifts to avoid you know manual handling of this pipe if the pipe comes down it the person will get just crushed below the pipe so just avoid manual intervention when you look at the high risk element look at this hot work you can see this fire booth a fire watcher and the appropriate ppes when you talk about appropriate ppe this is a person who is shifting the pipes smaller dia pipes with a shoulder pad or gloves the helmets for welding right or you can see the condition over here the sparks are just going away the electrical panel is just near you can see over here if the spark meets this electrical panel you will have catastrophe and this cannot be controlled so it's important to have such kind of environment rather than such and we can use we can save lot of lives of people so this is a fire watcher who is doing welding over here again you can see an unsafe condition over here or unsafe act both the cylinders are over here and he is doing a grinding kind of work and the all the sparks are going on the cylinder this is this is not right it's not right condition look at this gentleman over here he is using all the ppes and look at this gentleman he is without any ppe he is into unsafe condition and he is he is taking a unsafe act so this is very important to understand and these are some of the elements which generally comes across our our site but we generally ignore so it is important to do this there are checklists for gas cutting test what are to be for the the pressure gauges proper trolley the spark ignition all these things the uh, you know the torch all these things have to be checked periodically and see whether they are in order or not this is our responsibility management before handing over gas cutting set to the worker to do gas cutting and this is a management point hot work permit before you go and see whether there is unsafe conditions like this before you allow any person to do hot work and that is why hot work permit important becomes very very important and this again cannot be filled in by sitting in air condition site office it has to be done at site what is the cost of fire blanket it is 1000 to 1500 rupees per blanket you can see a uh, uh, sparks getting arrested this is a blanket otherwise what we have seen couple of days back was fire incident serum institute pune right and what was the cause it the cause was welding spots falling on consumable material combustible material sorry and what are the number of casualties five so this can be avoided by using such kind of blankets even if you do welding because welding has to be done and that can be arrested and what was the disaster which was then and we lost five lives five lives right so this is what will help you to uh, understand the use of smallest of element to avoid fire kind of issues at site and this is what happened couple of days back and when you talk about combustible material it should be away minimum fit minimum distance should be 35 feet between the hot work there has to be fire extinguisher and there has to be this distance and when you do this also we should have a fire blanket so we have full proof conditions to work for look at this piping this opening is there it is if it is not covered someone can get inside and you will have major injuries to his body part poor illumination when you do welding you don't have illumination site you will have issues right opening not covered you can see the opening over here anyone can just go in and get inside the opening one of the uh, experience i know is on one of the project site a surveyor came from outside for a day visit he went to the site and without knowing there was an opening which was not covered unintentionally he put his foot down he came from third floor to 
ground floor on the spot died 22 year old surveyor smallest of problems smallest of mistake so that was unsafe conditions as well as unsafe act look at the building which in qualities were here and kind of cables we used no trolleys for cylinder so there is a checklist for building machine right from proper power cable proper elcb <clears throat> proper pin top proper earthing and use of fire buckets or fire extinguishers is being checked before you allow the welding to happen whether we do it or not but this is the way to do it to avoid any catastrophe like we have uh, witnessed couple of days back manual intervention as i said use this. this was made for something else but we made a uh, 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 you can see a fixture over here to hold the pipes and it just lift the pipes this is a hydraulic pressure over here it just lift the pipes by without having manual intervention some of the elements of supports you can see the use of scissor lift over here the use of hydras the right tools are used to avoid any manual intervention otherwise such kind of installation cannot be done manually you have to use you can see some of the pipes getting used uh, is, is shifted by the hydras you can see the huge light pipe used by hydra there is hardly any manual intervention you can see couple of people only here you can see couple of people only here so this is how we can avoid manual intervention such kind of installation can be done only by having right tools and one of the important thing is before we get into the high risk activities we must be able to plan and when we plan we generally prepare the method statement and in method statement safety has to be given due importance we always talk about how we can do the work but how safely we can do is we start so one of the element which i had talked about this installation in one of our projects this installation we did a planning and how the planning was done you can just see how the bracket will be installed and how the pipe will be installed you can see the graphical description over here a forklift has been used to shift the pipes a person two persons are used to get the pipes and position you can see over here the pipes have gone into the position the next pipe comes in again goes into position then what happens another pipe come in goes into position and then we get a support installation so this is what we at least graphically know what is going to happen the horizontal pipe shifting how it was done a chain pulley was put number of chain pulleys are put five was lifted then getting shifted to another chain pulley another chain pulley and then it was shifted like this this is how the chain pulley was getting used the working platform what was we lifting space everything is identified before we get into the high risk activities this is one of the area where cooling tower pipes are shifted this was the cooling tower the pipes were supposed to be put in here the distance was from ground to third floor only this opening was available the pipes are stored on the ground floor look at how the pipes are shifted over here from but the plans we can see the pipes are getting shifted over here and how the pipe maneuver will happen the proper coordination was done before the activity was taken into this thing what are the major major potential risk in piping one is electric shock because we use lot of electric equipments like welding machine another is uh, injury to body so we can use the shoulder pads loss of uh, life because of fire we have seen fall from openings in the risers we have seen burn and injuries if you don't use the the right gears right ppes then there are burn and injuries to eyes is another area of concern over here what we can be doing the best practice is to give a, a fire retardant welding jackets to the welder at least he he doesn't have direct exposure to welding so these are the fire retardant welding jackets which are available which can be given to the welders and we can always identify the welder with these jackets as such but it's very important to understand insulation lot of exposure is happening which can cause to uh, harm to your body eye and all because of this chemicals which we use and if you use the right gloves for this chemicals at least we can avoid the exposure direct exposure to our body part to the chemical so these are some of the gloves and because the adhesives are harmful right and that's why this this mask is very important so that the smell doesn't go inside his body so how can we protect isolate a person from different hazards is very very important so high risk activities is another area of equipment installation how do we coordinate this equipment installation to avoid disaster because equipment conditions 
the safety of the equipment as well as safety of the people is very very important and that is where role of flagman comes in which we will be seeing a little later here now some of the installation of equipments you can see use of <clears throat> mechanical aids we have spoken about this earlier and we have seen the specifications how to be getting before you use that equipment for shifting this kind of charts are available equipment of chillers on top otherwise if you don't use you will have into this problem the cranes will get toppled your machines will give go for toss your people will have injuries the driver will have injuries the people uh, around the site will have injuries and there can be uh, damage to the building also so this if you are not using this kind of charts you will have problems so it is important to understand the element of this and we must be able to see that the crane is getting the chart and getting inspected for its its capability or capacity to take care of this installation and that's why the hoist inspection is very very important before you go ahead with the equipment inspection one of the good practice is you know people get crushed before the moving vehicles one of these is hydra you can see this to avoid the contact of tire even if the person comes in there is a run over protection which is given here simple run over protection say so if a person doesn't come inside you will have this protection at least for some point of time so it will not directly get into the tires so this is another element of getting some safeguards more important is this guy this is a flagman he will tell you whether to take reverse or whether to go forward by looking at the condition because driver is sitting in one cabin and there has to be a proper coordination between the flagman the role of flagman becomes very very important or else you will lead into again a disaster safety checklist for heavy lifts what are the checklist before we take a risk right it is important to take a calculated risk rather than going into just ram bharose when you talk about general safety guidelines essential ppes are important based on the application so you can see a person over here you can see a next slide over here this is unsafe and this is safe helmet to the goggles to the to the uh, jackets to the shoes this has to be covered properly before he goes into the site because site is a dangerous site. otherwise you can see some of the people over here people are working without any ppes look at this gentleman who is doing the plaster he is just giving his life look at these people no ppes the scaffolding are horrible you can see the scaffolding verticalness of the scaffolding so this is what happens generally and since we are hvc guys we are also getting affected because of such conditions so these are all unsafe conditions which happens look at this no one is wearing even helmet not a single person <clears throat> not a single person when you talk about creating safe environment these are some of the chemicals which you use and we when we use this chemical trays we have to be <clears throat> you can see how this organized they are kept and how organized they are kept over here this is a drip tray which is used so even some chemical falls it will not go onto the floor it will get arrested into the tray so these are some of the good practices which can take containment of the chemicals and chemicals when it comes into hot contact it will again create a lot of danger so it is very important to have such kind of kits small small element these are not coming out of any world these are can be created site material storage another important thing how well it is being stored the picture speaks for themselves because this is another area of unsafe condition right equipment and access you can see how people are doing the access over here and you can see right equipment these are the i think hydro test pumps totally unsafe and if you use kind this kind of this thing we as a management are totally responsible we cannot say that is unsafe act this is unsafe condition we are giving this equipment to the people to do work at site can you do work with such kind of equipment it is very dangerous regular inspection even if the ppes have to be regularly inspected the machines have to be regularly inspected because human kind also have problems machines will have problems so we have to see the right availability 
And when we talk about inductions, another person coming in, in to the site, there has to be general safety inductions to tell the people. Well, because people coming from Bihar or West Bengal to our Bombay site should know what is the site is all about. What are the dangers at site? If you just come in with the site, he will be having a lot of issues or he will face uh, unsafe conditions and he will even die. So it is important before he comes in, the elements of instructions have to be given as a safety induction. These are safety inductions guides or tools or record sheets so that you see each and every person who comes in has been given the induction of safety at site. A lot of signages are required about danger, about no smoking. And one of the instances which I faced was because of smoking, we have faced huge amount of damage to our site. One of the site, which was in Nagpur, uh, during that Kodhubud, uh, you know, storm, one person who was having a smoking of bidi, there was dry grass, he just put in the bidi into the dry grass and our site of it was just near. Our store was just near. Within the store, there were all the cylinders kept, of uh, the gas cylinders were kept. And the fire just became, it was a Sunday. No one was there at, at the site. Fire spread and it took the entire site into a fire kind of situation. The, the fire, uh, you can see the fire brigade was there, but there was no water inside. And it had a lot of implications at site. A lot of damages happened to the property. The cylinders were just you know, bursting like bombs there. So these are small, small things which help. So which are the assembly areas, which are the uh, protective cues to be to be worn, has to be told with the safety signages. Daily toolbox talks. Again, I talked about very important on job training. What kind of training is supposed to be done? What building is going to be done? What is going to do a lifting? Everything has to be told about the job and the hazard related to the job and the hazard related to site. So where is going to work, what he goes to work and how he's going to work is very important to be told in the daily toolbox talks. These are daily toolbox talks uh, training records. And when we talk about safety, safety has to be driven by the uh, people and motivation recognition becomes very important. So it is important to keep the moral of the people. You have to recognize people who are doing good in safety. You call a workman and tell them you have done a good job. You recognize the other team member around him will start motivating to do a good job so that they also get recognition. Recognition for any human being is, is very, very important in life. So smallest of recognition can help people to motivate and boost the morale and create a safety culture, which is important because mind is very, very important when it requires for preparation of our safety. And this is what will help you. Sharing of incident, even if the incident happened somewhere else, you should share with the people so that they become aware of not repeating the same mistake which someone one else have, must have repeated somewhere else and it can be avoided. So the sharing of incidents should happen with some photographs, with some videos that will that will register into your mind. So it is very important. There's another uh, aspect of safety, sharing of incidents over here. A person failed, you can see a video being shown over here. People are registered very easily with the video. Another important thing is we generally don't report near misses. A near misses is unplanned event that did not result in, into injury, but had a potential to do so. So we must report near miss, a smallest of near miss like this. A nail on the floor, it will just go and hit the foot. A near miss like this. Because every unsafe act, then 300 near misses, out of 300 near misses, 30 converts into minor injury and out of 30, it becomes one severe of fatal. So near misses a very important role. It gives a lot of pre-alerts for us to take care of action, take immediate action. So near misses have to be reported. And another important element which part for us is working at height. We do a lot of work at height, ducting, piping. Look at this. The person is inside the scaffolding, uh, is inside the false ceiling. The false ceiling is not designed to take care of his load, right? But he's, he's going on this false ceiling and doing the work. This is called unsafe act. Look at it, just boy. Totally unbalanced is the person who is his half body is inside the pulse ceiling and half body is near the pulse. Look at these people, they are chit chatting. They are not worried about the person over here. He's almost about to fall. And look at this kind of scaffolding. This will help you to protect the person. So it is important to use safe scaffolding. Look at the jugad. 
total jugad which is not going to help any time look at this people are just sitting on something else this is a safe act this is a unsafe act look at this person who is on this on the duck which is sitting over here if the duck is out if the joint of the duck goes out he'll just fall and get died so this working at height is very very important and lot of people have died because of this you can use wood scaffoldings with lot of full worth of elements even for lifting uh, some of the material you can use a kind of pulley arrangement for the scaffolding so that you don't waste time in lifting the material something can be done innovatively because working at height as i said will definitely into major injury or even to fatal so things have to be put in place ladders have to be used where it is used required if there is a height issue then ladder should not be used and even if you use the ladders they have to be safe they have to be anchored and they cannot be beyond in particular height otherwise you will lose the grip of the ladder and just fall down you can see how the safe ladder and how unsafe same same activity but done differently never allow more than one person on a ladder because it is made to use only one person for that ladders are generally not recommended but even if you use for certain condition use it uh, religiously you can see some of the it's because of the working heads this is one of the picture where close to 25 people died because of scaffolding fail look at this gentleman who is doing work at site look at his scaffolding it's is totally unstable and he is taking risk for life look at this guy who is taking risk for his life so these are working at height you can see look at this picture it's a very important picture uh, people can laugh but look at this the person is used to give support to the person to do brick look at this how this person is supporting to this person to do work how this scaffolding is used so these are some of the pictures which shows for itself and look at the safe conditions how we can use the scaffolding and do your work properly good scaffolds whenever the scaffolds are not available or when the speed is requirement you can use this kind of scissor lift or man lift to do your work good scaffolds which has got a right runners a stabilizers a tow board a fixed platform the ladder to go up and there is a horizontal bracing so it doesn't fall from here all these are good elements of scaffolding the runners the stabilizers the tow board the the, the foundation the bracing and the ladders to go up this is what it is these are all guard rails all these things are taken care of for good scaffold this is a fixed scaffolding which is being used basically on the facade of the project everything is covered here and there are less chances unless the person takes risk less chances of getting injured over here there are some of the checklist for scaffoldings to have safe scaffolding before you give it into the uh, action mode for do act and when you use uh, go for working at height you should also use the right safety belts the safety harnesses those have to be not only wear has to be you no know, put into position otherwise just to show that i am wearing safety belt we are not doing policing at site this has to be anchored properly so that there is no fall even someone falls the safety belt because of anchorage can take care of person these are do's and don'ts of working at site and when you do at height and you use some of the elements of you no know, spanners and all those things the spanner comes from a height if it can hit a person below you have you can use some of the smallest things which can hold the spanners always with you it will not slip off from your hand so these are small things which you can use there are fall arresters even a uh, person falls there is a net below he gets you know arrested in the net and he can his life can be saved working at height checklist the permit you can see a man lift we can use for here another element at site is slip and trip where people fall and they lose life in one of the project site there are four people working at on ladders at different different places in a corridor there is water below one of the fellow came down he got slipped and he got injury on the head and died before he reached the hospital so these are there are some human factors over here you can see 16% of housekeeping issues 25% is because of wet area 
54 percent is because of the human factor so you can see uh, the human factor over here in slip and trail and there are chances of people even getting fatal slip fall from heights as i showed you one four kg train dropped 60 meters hits with a force of 234 kilogram per meter that's same as small car hitting 6.5 square square meter area see the kind of impact a smallest of span up or range falling with that gravity it can just pierce the head of the person over here so that is the kind of force it becomes so it is important to avoid such incidents of falling from height how, how we can be avoided <clears throat> you can see this nut bolts can just drip from uh, from here go down and hit someone you can see some of these open spaces the material can just fall and hit someone so these are some of the areas so first of all even if something falls hard hat is necessary for the person barricading is necessary so that people do not go into that area to prevent the injury and there has to be signage otherwise this will have effect one of the <clears throat> area which we have to look at when we talk about safety the first few weeks of each new site is most dangerous because the people are new the site is new for them and they will try to take some shortcuts and that is very important the first few weeks are very very critical for site most of the accident happens when new person joins within the first weeks accidents are more frequent at the end of the day because at the rest of completing the work people to take a lot of shortcuts and that's why accident happens small building are the most risky because it's a compact the congestion and that's why there are a lot of unsafe conditions there <clears throat> safety helmets and all those ppps can prevent you and one of the important thing is on saturdays at the end of the week there are chances of having incidents or accidents there because again that's a weekend people want to go out supervisors leave early and people want to take shortcuts so these are some of the few facts which i wanted to present about this stuff now what happens 56 percent accidents construction accidents are because of fall from height 21 because of trapped in somewhere else 10 percent because of moving vehicles five percent because of electricity four percent because of falling objects three percent because uh, we get into the moving machinery and one percent is because of exposure to hot but 56 percent of the accidents are because of falling from height so these are this this in this statuses will give you a lot of insight to look at site so everyone can get in the place of works but that's with safe work again the edges of the site has to be protected if someone falls from top it will have issue so good lighting good access good <clears throat> control measures at site good fencing will help in creating safe condition that site is a roof area generally not for us but we generally go for installation of fans and all roof is again area of danger excavation <clears throat> most of the chill water piping and other work which you put in buried into the pipe is another area where people can just get buried and buried alive are you going to work on a trench or digging your own grave this is very important before you get into this kind of situation you will just get buried live if you don't take care of uh, you know side before you get into the action crane safety we have talked about a very simple fact you have to see the, the, the checklist of the crane the capacity of the crane before we get into crane electricity we have to give respect to the electricity because no if you try to do any chance with the electricity you will just get tired electricity the cables have to be checked the earthings have to be checked the fuses have to be checked even on the construction side, the rubber mat has to be there in front of the cable, uh, the panels. And all the cables, all the lugs, all the fuses have to be properly checked. The relays have to be checked. And there has to be separate practice to take care of. Because this is one of the area where if you take slightest of chance, you will, you will get into the major issues. Basic safety flexibility, all accidents are preventable. It is not that no, none of the accident is preventable. No job is worth getting hurt for. Every job has to be done safely. Incidents can be managed. Safety, everyone's responsibility. And we must look at new avenues to look at how continuous improvement can be done 
we cannot be uh, leaving it to the one person and saying that it is his job it is everybody's job because we have to create a safe culture and when we talk about reporting there are some leading indicators and there are some lagging indicators lagging indicators is when something happens that is fatal and all those things ldi and all those things but it's have to be tracked this will give the leading indicators will give you how safe is your work place the near misses the first aid cases is all have to be tracked and there has to be clear transparency and we must be able to get pride in getting the last item safe man hours without any injury and this is where has to be the aim and this is what i told in the beginning that we must ensure the people come and they go back safely these are hazard observation reports this is the accident investigation report which will give you what is the root cause so that this root cause can be then communicated to many other people so that they can avoid such kind of incidents in the sites first aid treatment how many treatments have been given what kind of treatment has to be done this will be <clears throat> able to give you the pulse of the site and you will be able to take decisions and actions on your site when you talk about best practices there has to be awareness and when the awareness is there the communication has to be done to the lowest level of the person who works on the site it cannot be the the junior due to the supervisors it has to go drill down to the workmen and the safety part has to be known documentation become very key because that will tell you what has happened what are the legal issues and all those things can be taken care proper equipment we talked about it we must be able to give person a right equipment to work for it is our responsibility supervision is critical because i said the difference between good work a safe work and not that safe work and bad work is only supervision we can use the best of equipment we can use the best of the knowledge uh, best of the material but the person who is supervising is not good it, it has no meaning we must innovate in safety and there has to be transparency if something has happened we must report it uh, without fear because when you try and communicate we will try and learn so transparency is important and there are three primary protection layers which i want to talk this is a food for thought one is the facilities under this process other people if you take care of the facilities by creating right conditions if you take your proper rules and processes so that people do not take any undue uh, risk and you take care of the people by training them i think most of the issues related to safety can be sorted out no job is important that it cannot be done safely so it is very important under no circumstances we should take risk and get the people in front now when we go into the smart age digital age is something which is coming in safety also you can see a, we have seen the ppes earlier and we can see the ppes here the smart hat the smart eye gear the smart boots the smart vest the smart watches will tell you all about safety when you, the work is actually happening the person can wear and he can get lot of elements because of the sensor even if there is an accident because of the sensors because these sensors are connected to your smartphones and desktop they can be collect you know compiled compiled on a cloud and a proper analysis can be done and we can take a proper actions you can take proactive actions based on these elements so these are coming in uh, we are not into that mode we have to still get into the fundamentals clear but this is coming in remote monitoring which is happening at critical places using webcams and drones so that uh, we can get a live work in front of your eyes what is happening there and we can pre alert the people if somebody something is getting done wrongly there itself so this is getting happening but first of all as the hvc team we must look at the fundamentals which we talked about earlier let us correct those before we get into the digital because we should not get into the just by going to as a make a fashion statement we have to have fundamentals right before we get into the next step so with this i thank uh, for giving me an opportunity to cover this two important aspects today uh, uh, in a very very short period of time i hope i have delivered i give uh, value to all of you and thank you very much for your patient listening i am open for question answer if there are any Saloni. Thank you, Ajay sir. Saloni, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm there. Can you can you take the questions actually because there's a background noise at my level. Yes, sir, of course. Okay, um, so Ajay sir, we have a few questions in the chat apart from all the praises that you have for this session. uh there is one is it uh, holding does it hold nitrogen also in the pipe i have no idea what this question was for it is from uh 
from Nikalam. If Nikalam, you're here, then please unmute yourself. I'll I'll let you speak and ask a question in person. Is it whole nitrogen also? Generally, nitrogen is used for the copper piping. I think uh, that's what we use. But for uh, for MS pipe, you go for hydro test. That is the safe way of doing it. Uh, apart from that, uh, if anybody has any question, you all can raise your hand. I'll let you speak, and you can ask your question uh, to Ajat sir. Thank you, Ram sir, for that uh, nice uh, motivation. Okay. Looks like Ajat sir, your session is ahead. Nobody has a lot of questions. It was actually very uh, a, a very detailed presentation. And we have Aran sir also here with us. So I like I like to request Aran sir to please give us the word of thanks. Hi, Kazi Aran here. As usual, a fantastic session here. Uh, always, always love to listen to you. I love uh, you know. And and I just want to tell you something. Uh, you you have been giving a lecture, so you are not seeing the uh, our chat. So uh, the innovative way has started. You know, a lot of people are coming in a groups and attending your lecture. So. Tejas Bodawala's office had about 15 people. My office had 10 people. Vivek had six people. So, uh, you know, that way, uh, it's it's a new trend started in, in uh, you know, for such kind of lectures, which is very interesting because uh, that's what uh, the learning is all about. You know, the whole team is sitting in office and uh, maybe you will see one representative in, a, in, a, in participant, but then there are 10, 15, 20 guys sitting behind him. And the pictures are very interesting. You, 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 once you finish your lecture, you look at those pictures. You know, so uh, I think that's that's what all uh, uh, you know is is about listening to you. Uh, you know, you with your kind of experience which you have in in at site. You know, which is, is very very important. And I love because it refreshes even my uh, lost touch of uh, sites. <laughs> you know, I've been mean, I've been mean away from site uh, the actual uh, ending of site for very long now, Kazi. I remember our good times together. You know, and various difficult projects. Ram sir is there, and many times Ram yes. was our boss uh, that time. So uh, I still uh, still miss those fantastic days at site. Uh, yeah, life changes. Uh, I think uh, it, it also okay. is you know, this this kind of presence and this kind of attendance which is coming through in groups from offices makes it very uh, evidently clear that people are more and more eager to, to come into a physical program. Yeah, people have started moving out to their offices and coming together. So I think the time has come for us to come together on a physical platform. Start. And, and start enjoying all these uh, fantastic lectures, which uh, you know I think IMC organizes. So thank you very much, Kazi, for uh, you know doing this. Uh, this program unfortunately got shifted a couple of times, so we lost a lot of uh, registrations. But that's fine. Uh, if you with your permission, uh, then we may load this into on our YouTube channel uh, if you give a necessary permission to Saloni and uh, Jayan. Yes, and yes. Mukesh. Yeah, I'll so send thanks, you the uh, corporate permission. So. <laughs> so thanks, Kazi. I look forward to meet you very soon in person. And thank you very much, all the participants, all the attendees uh, who have been here, uh, you know, for last three years, three hours, and uh, you know, enjoyed this session. Thank you very much. Even I, sir, I, I wanted to mention a thing actually. The things were not really normal at uh, Kazi sir's end. Still, he has managed his time to uh, deliver. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, had, he had a lot of big personal difficulties also, and still he. He could uh, find out a time for us is great. It's always no, no, no. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Kazi. Thanks. Thanks. Sir. Really, thank you, Kazi, sir, for sparing your time and then thought. Thank you, Mukesh. Thank you, Saloni. Thank you, sir. Hello. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone, and please stay tuned for more of our sessions on webinars uh, by Ishtar Mumbai chapter, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.